welcome, welcome to, to MCC. MCC. Hi, and welcome to MCC. Hello, MCC. Hi, welcome to MCC. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to MCC. Hi, and welcome to MCC. Hello, and welcome to MCC. And welcome to MCC. Hi, and welcome to MCC. Hi, and welcome to MCC. From Esteline. From the Glovers. From the Cars. And we're the Stinsons. From the Classic Glasses. From the Gardeners. From the Williams. From the Longs. From Howard. Susan. And Grammy. From, from the Densons. Densons. From, from the, the Birch. <laughs> well, good morning and hey, welcome to our online service. We are so excited that you're here. We're about to kick it off with worship today. It's our second week doing this song. Hey, we're just going to declare that, hey, God, he turns mourning to dancing. God, we thank you for that, Lord. God, that you're just taking situations, Lord, that, that might look negative and dark. God, and you're turning it around, Lord, for our good. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on, join in with us. Thank you, Lord. Come on, help me sing. And I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Thank you, Father.
Come on, with all your heart right now, just sing this to him. God, nothing in this world satisfies the way that you do, Father. Come on, we're going to sing it again. There's nothing better. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, say your time. us, Lord. No one else can free us, God, the way that you have. God, you turn graves into gardens. You turn mourning to dancing. You turn seas into highways. God, you make a way. God, where it looks like there is no way, God, you make a way. God, we just thank you for who you are. God, and we thank you that we are who you say we are. God, that we find our identity in you this morning, Lord. Thank you, Father.
answer me. Come on, sing it. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Let's say that last line. I'm a child. I'm a child. is that and that we are as children God we thank you for this privilege to be called sons and daughters to be welcomed into our father's house God I, I just want to pray over anyone this morning that might be sitting in their living rooms and feeling like who am I and what do I have to offer and what is my identity and maybe Maybe they've lost a job that they found their identity in. Maybe they can't play a sport right now. They found their identity in whatever it is. God, I ask you to invade their home. God, and you remind hearts this morning. God, you are who I say you are, God, from you, that you are who your Father says. Thank you, Lord, for this precious reminder, God, that we are your children. fight our battles in worship this morning. This is how I fight my battles. <laughs> Sing that out. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. With worship, with praise. And this is how I fight my battles. With God. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. Come on, let's sing it. It may look. Let's shout this out.
simple what we're singing but but it's so powerful at the same time that this is how we fight our, fight our battles are right here in worship right here in praise that battles are being fought in one God you go before us there's a verse that, that I was reading today and, and I've read it before but some days they just kind of hit a little bit differently and it's Exodus 14 14 it's the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. So I think maybe during a time when we feel like, oh, we have to, we have to do something and, and we're stretched all these different ways and we, we feel like we have to fight these battles for ourselves and sometimes it gets lonely. And it's hard to carry that because we were never made to carry that. We were made to surrender and to surrender to an almighty God that carried it all on the cross. He took it all. And so he fights your battles for you. You need only to be still. Some versions say you need only to be silent. Sometimes we just have to sit. Maybe today that's you. You don't feel like you have the words. Hey, he's still there with you. You just sit with your hands up and surrender and say, God, I know you can do it. I know you're, you're fighting for me. God, we thank you for this morning. God, we thank you that lives are just being changed, God, because of who you are. God, we thank you for being here in every living room, with every family, with every person who may feel alone today. We know that you are here in our midst. We love you. In Jesus' name. Hey, right there in your home, can you just give it up for the Lord, the King? Just give him praise. Lift up a shout. It might feel weird at first, but it's going to feel good after. Just lift up a shout of praise to him. God, we love you. Hey, again, it is such a privilege to worship with each and every one of you. Let's go ahead and check out this week's announcements. Hi, and welcome to our online service. We are so excited that you chose to click on this video and come and worship with us today. Also, take a second and leave us a comment and let us know where you're watching from and share this video with your family and friends so that they can join us as well. I know we are all so ready for the day we can join together in our physical location and things are beginning to shift. So before we get to today's announcements, Pastor Steve is here with an important COVID-19 update. Hey MCC family, from the bottom of our hearts, Michelle and I want you to know that we can hardly wait to meet together again in person at Maranatha Christian Center. While Maranatha Christian Center did not reopen this weekend, May 3rd, we are working hard to develop a plan for how to create a safe environment for future gatherings. Your safety, health, and well-being are our main concern. I know that Governor Abbott has begun a plan for some institutions, churches included, to begin to reopen and has laid out guidelines for those reopenings. We feel that with the social distance restrictions, continued limit as to how many can meet at any one time, 25% approximately of our capacity, and with the lack of ability to provide children's services with the mandate for those over 65 to have to meet in a different room or at a different time, that continuing online services through the month of May will better fit our model and meet our needs. 
Should those restrictions be lifted before that time, and should we feel that no one will be compromised, we will consider reopening sooner. When we stopped meeting physically, you adapted and attended MCC online in great numbers. Your generosity never wavered, and you continue to give over and above with regular tithes and offerings, and you gave to such needed projects as MCC Share. We are so inspired and encouraged by you. I've said before that how we do things may change, but why we do them will never change. We'll always be committed to leading people to become fully devoted followers of Christ, no matter how we do it. When we do reopen, church may have to look a little different, but we will meet together again and it will be fantastic. Till then, God bless, stay safe. We've recently launched a new ministry, our online Spanish service. We've always had a heart for global missions and have been intentional to share the gospel and support ministries both local and abroad. Being the body of Christ reaches beyond our local communities and into the world. We've gotten some amazing feedback and support and are excited to see all that God does through this ministry. So keep spreading the word. Each Sunday at 1145, we will stream our Spanish service right here on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. It's so exciting to see God using this ministry to share His love and truth throughout the world. Speaking of missions, we want to give you an update from our church plant in Bucerías, Mexico. They are also working diligently to serve their local community during this pandemic. Here's Pastor Cairo and his family with a special message for us. Familia, my family and me, we send you blessings, blessings, Pastor. Thanks a lot. Say hello to the uh, Maranata Church. Muchas gracias a todos. Okay, Pastor Cairo sends his blessing and sincere appreciation as we help support the work they are doing in their local community. Even though they have also suspended their weekly services, they are continuing to serve by providing food and supplies to local families. Thank you for your generosity and for your support of Iglesia Cristo Teama. If you'd like to know more about how you can help support this ministry, email us at missions at maranathadecab.org. That's it for today's announcements. For more info on anything you heard today, check out our website at maranathadecab.org and make sure to subscribe to our monthly newsletter. Also, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date on all things MCC. And if you'd like to give, you can do so from our website by clicking on Give Now, or you can mail your tithes and offerings to P.O. Box 203, DeKalb, Texas 75559. Thanks for watching. Now get ready for an exciting message from Pastor Travis Jackson. Good morning, welcome. We're so glad to be here this morning. Have our special friend, Pastor Travis Jackson here from a Church on the Rock in Texas County. You know, the Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So, you know, the way I read that, it says that it's a choice that I make. I yeah. choose to rejoice or I can choose to be in the mullet grub and I just choose today to rejoice, don't you? That's it, amen. amen. Well, Pastor Travis is uh, from a Church on the Rock in Texarkana, as we said, and we've known you guys for quite a while. I don't remember yeah. when we first met, but yeah. we had a lot of opportunities to interact together. And he's got quite a testimony, some great things that God has done in his life and his family. And uh, how are things in, in Church on the Rock down there? Hey, things are good. You know, we are weathering this uh, pandemic or COVID-19 like everybody and trying to remember what day it is right. sometimes, but I know. <laughs> we are doing well. It, it has been a lot of different things, but I believe it's caused us to reevaluate some things and, and maybe stretch ourselves a little bit and reach out for some new things and some greater things. I'm Absolutely. believing, and I shared with someone the other day, that uh, when this thing's all over and we do get to come back together, I'm, I'm believing that our churches have grown. Amen. And that we've seen a real in, uh, increase in our people. So uh, I want you to just make welcome, Pastor Travis. If you're watching on Facebook Live, you can also comment. I love to see those comments come in. So just say something. Hey, Pastor Travis, we we'll welcome you here. Or Pastor Travis rocks. There you something go. Something like that. But uh, <laughs> we want to just give you the opportunity to share what God's putting in your heart. And we Amen. appreciate you coming. And we look forward to a great day. Amen. Thank you so much. Pastor Steve and Miss Michelle, uh, such an honor to be here uh, today. Just to speak, just to share. Share and to come hang out at a church that that I love, that our family loves, that you know we have been connected uh, a long time. But a lot of friends here in Decab, and just the testimony of what the Lord has been doing through this church, the testimony that y'all are to God and and 
the love and the worship that you bring to the Lord, but also what you bring to the community and the love that you have for the people around here. And uh, it's just a great testimony. So again, I am privileged to be here. Always good to be in DCAB. And again, a lot of friends that are here. So I want to share just a few minutes with you, hopefully encourage you, hopefully uh, challenge you. But more than anything, we want to get closer to God together. We want to draw near to the Lord. And, and hopefully, you know, when we leave this place uh, or you leave your living room with your family, God will have spoke to us. You know, when we meet with God, we want to we want to spend time with God. We want to connect with God. We want to allow time for God to speak to us. So I'm just going to pray there's a voice within my voice uh, today. So again, once again, super glad to be here. Uh, but a few nights ago, if you remember, uh, here in the area, a little storm came through. You know, I live in Texarkana and probably 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night, we're asleep. And I knew there was going to be, you know, some rain that came that night. But all of a sudden we hear thunder, we hear lightning, our, our power goes out at our house. And, and I have three little kids. I have a six-year-old boy. I have a four-year-old girl and I have a one-year-old. And you guessed it. They woke up and they were, you know, just kind of what's going on? Where are the lights? And uh, they all ended up in our bed that night and uh, we prayed together and the lights came back on pretty soon, but it reminded me of a documentary that I actually watched uh, the fall before, just a few months before. If you remember, all the hurricanes were kind of out there in the Gulf, and I can remember watching this documentary, and it was about the worst storms that had hit the United States, and one of these storms I found fascinating was the Great Storm of 1900. It was a Category 4 hurricane that hit uh, Galveston, and so just kind of listening to this documentary, watching this documentary about 2 a.m., this Category 4 storm comes in, and it basically demolishes Galveston Island. 12,000 people lost their lives. Thousands of houses were destroyed. Businesses were destroyed. It just came, and it was, it was terrible. Now, they knew a storm was coming. They didn't know the magnitude of what kind of storm was coming. You know, this is a long time ago. This is before they had t technology like we do today. And, you know, a lot of eyewitnesses said, to be honest, we were caught off guard. We knew something was coming. We did not know it would be this bad. And another eyewitness said, you know, right before, you know, basically this whole thing hit our island, I can remember being outside and seeing this huge wall of gray water coming towards our island. I mean, this is an island. There is nowhere to go. And people said, you know what? We just were not prepared. We were not prepared for the storm. And listen, that's kind of what I want to talk about today for a few minutes. Not only do storms, you know, sometimes come to our area or come to our town, but sometimes storms come to our own life. Sometimes things can be blue outside, the sky's blue, it's sunny, everything is great. And then sometimes something bad happens. Maybe you lose your job. Maybe, you know, there's a health issue. Maybe there's something going on with your kids or your spouse. And it's like storms just come up. And I want to talk about that for a few minutes. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, what side of the tracks you come from. Uh, it doesn't matter your age. At some point in time in our life, every single one of us, we are going to face storms. We're going to face things that we are unprepared for. We're going to face trials. We're going to face tribulations. We're going to face tests. We're going to face valleys. At some point in time in our life, we're going to face pain. Because why? Because we live in a fallen world. Um, and what, what we do during these hard times, I think, uh, really determines where our future goes. What we do during the valley, what we do during these storms, I think determines if we're successful. I think it determines if we're going to make it. I think it determines what kind of life we're going to live. Are we going to live an overcoming life or not? What kind of relationship are we going to have with God? The fact of the matter is when storms come in our life, sometimes it can be a time where we draw near to God, where we get close to God. But other times it can be a time where the enemy wants us just to pull away. And so I want to talk about just for a few minutes this morning what we do when storms come to our life. Because the fact of the matter is it's easy to be close to God when you're on top of the mountain. It's easy to be close to God when nothing bad happens, right? When, when there's no problems in your marriage, when your kids are following after God, when your health is good, when you got a little money in the bank, things are good. But what happens when you're in the valley? What happens when you don't know the answer? What happens when something just comes up, you had a blue sky, but now it's gray? What do you do? How do you proceed? Does your faith grow or does your faith fall away? Do you get closer to God or do you fall further away from God? Do you start doing drugs or alcohol or just watch hours and hours of TV and disconnect from God? Listen, during times like these, it's where we hold on to God. 
Times like these, it's when we connect to God. When we are in the storm, I think that's when our faith is really proven. And so what I want to do this morning is I want to look at a couple characters in the Bible and how they responded when they faced storms and valleys in their life. And I also want to give a little of my own testimony about a storm that I walked through for several years of my life. You know, a lot of you that will be watching this and listening to this, you may know my story. Some of you may not. You know, uh, just about a year ago, actually, May 7th, uh, I received a kidney transplant. And God brought me through a, a real difficult time in my life. And listen, if God can bring me through, he can bring you through. So I want to give a word of encouragement for those of you that are going through a storm right now. Or maybe you've been through a storm, or, or maybe you'll go through a storm. Listen, God has something for you today. Before we jump into these five points, let me pray. So Lord, we love you. We thank you so much that you're a good God, that you love us, that you care about us. Lord, we know that you're here with us. God, I pray today that you would speak to our heart, that you would help us. God, there's a lot of people out there that may be going through something tough right now. God, I pray that they know that you love them, that you care about them, and things are going to be okay because you're near. So Lord, help us today in Jesus' name. Amen. So real quick, I want to look at five things to do when you are in the middle of a storm. And the title of my message is Navigating the Storm. And so the first thing to remember when you are navigating a storm is when you are caught off guard, God is not caught off guard. When you're caught off guard, when I'm caught off guard, when something crazy happens, God is still on his throne and he's not caught off guard. I think most of us in here, we're familiar uh, with the story of Job. And I want to read a few verses here. This is Job chapter 1. And it says this, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and he was upright. And he feared God and he turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. And so let me summarize that for us real quick. Job has it going on. Job has got money. Job has children. Job has people working for him. And Job is righteous before the Lord. This guy has it all going on, but I think we also know what happens really quickly. We know Satan, one day he approaches God. And basically he says, the only reason that Job cares for you or worships you is because he's been so blessed. Let me tell you, if you take that stuff away, he will not worship you. He'll curse you, right? And I can just believe God saying, that's my boy Job. He's not going to do it. He's faithful. He's righteous. He's strong. But we know what happens. Satan is allowed to touch him. And in a matter of just a few moments, he goes from this wealthy father with 10 kids, uh, good health, to losing everything. His animals, they get stolen. His kids, they die. His servants, you know, they die. He gets sick in his own body. His wife even tells him, go curse God and die, Job. That's a bad day. All this stuff happens basically just within a few hours. And it's like everything in his life collapses. I think we would all say that's a storm. I think we would all say that that is a valley. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really understand all of Job chapter 1 where Satan comes in and he presents himself to God. First of all, he has to come present himself to the Lord. Uh, but it's Satan that wants to hurt Job. And God allows it. Listen, I don't know uh, everything about this story, like I said, but I do know that God is in control. What I do know is that God gave dominion to Adam. Because of sin, Adam forfeited that dominion. And it seems like at times the enemy has just a, a time to run wild and kind of do what he wants. It's almost like the struggle is between us and the enemy with dominion. And when we give it to God, when we trust the Lord, when we give it to Jesus, right, things are good. But when we don't, listen, the enemy, he runs wild. So Job, he's caught off guard. The world uh, has basically turned upside down for this man. And I'll be honest with you, it's kind of exactly how I felt when my whole kidney thing started to happen. Um, I felt caught off guard. I felt like just somebody came in and punched me in the gut. And, and just for reference, I want to tell you a little bit about how this transpired. Six or seven years ago, um, I wasn't feeling very good. And went to the doctor. I'm reluctant to go to the doctor. I went and thought, maybe I have the flu. Maybe I have strep. Maybe something's going on. They took my blood. They, they you know, did all the tests. And, and I didn't have strep, didn't have the flu. And uh, anyway, I went home. The next day, the doctor called me and he said, we have a problem. Your creatinine levels are super high. And I can remember telling the doctor, I don't take creatine, you know, and not even knowing what that was. And so they recommend that I go see a nephrologist. 
nephrologist is a kidney doctor. So I go see the nephrologist. They run the same blood work test, and they end up getting, uh, giving me a, a biopsy. A biopsy is where they go in, a little needle. They pull a little tissue out of your kidney. Then they analyze it. Uh, after analyzing my kidney, they realize that I have about 50% kidney function. Well, 50% is, is not great, but 50% is not terrible. So what they end up doing, they give me a lot of medication thinking that that's going to you know, boost my, my functionality of my kidneys. And so six months go by. I take a lot of medication and nothing works. Uh, it's kind of right where it was. So my doctor, he sends off my biopsy to a specialist at MD Anderson. They, they analyze it. They look at it and say, hey, this is an autoimmune disease. Uh, it's progressive, but this kind of kidney disease, uh, it's going to get worse, but it's going to take some time. And so I talk to my doctor and my doctor say, hey, this, this could take 10 years. This could take 20 years. This isn't a big deal really at all at this point in time. So I thought, hey, awesome. You know, at this time, you know, we're, you know, I'm young, I'm running around, I'm probably 28 years old at this time, we're traveling the world, we're doing our thing, we begin to start our family. Uh, the only thing I have to do is give blood every six months to make sure everything is okay. And we did this for about a year and a half or so. Then I started feeling bad. Uh, for about 30 straight days, I had a low-grade fever, 99.5, 99.9. Uh, once again, my wife convinces me to go to the doctor. And once they go and they do a few tests, they, they rush me to the, to the hospital. They do a spinal tap, uh, thinking I had some type of meningitis. Well, they give me a lot of medicine as well. And come to find out, they said I got bit by a disease-carrying tick. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, I've been in the woods, you know, my whole life, pulled off a, a lot of ticks. I never pulled one off. And so the reason I say that is this. When you have an autoimmune disease and you get bit by a tick that carries disease, it's not a good mixture. And so my kidney function went from 50% to 10%, just like that. And I'm thinking, you have got to be kidding me. 50% is not great, but it's not terrible. 10% is not good. And so I, I go back to my doctor, and we're looking at this, and this is when he first says, you are going to have to get a kidney transplant, and you are going to have to get on dialysis. I'm 30 years old at the time. I have a two-year-old son. I have a six-month-old daughter, and I felt like I got punched in the stomach. I'm thinking, what is this? This doesn't happen to me. This happens to everybody else, not me. I've got too much stuff to do. I've got too many things going on. I don't have time for this. And I really, I mean, I can just remember going back to my truck and just thinking, what is happening? This is a, this is a bad dream. And so what ends up happening is, is over a year, I go from 10% function in my kidney to 5% function in my kidney. And at that point, that's when I started dialysis. Uh, I did peritoneal dialysis, or also known as PD. It's where they put a, a peritoneal catheter in your abdominal lining. And you put some solution. It's basically five pounds of solution. And some of you that are watching today, you may be very familiar with this. But you put the, uh, the, the solution into your abdominal lining. You leave it there for four or six hours and then uh, you, you exchange it, you change it out. And so that's what I was doing four times a day, every four to six hours I was, I was doing these exchanges. And I'll be honest, man, it caught me off guard. You know, I, I did not want this to happen. And I'll be honest, you know, it shook me a little bit. I've always been in pretty good shape. I've always been healthy. I played sports in college. Um, and here I am all of a sudden, I'm in my early thirties. I have a a catheter down to my knee. I'm on dialysis. I can't play with my kids like I want to play with my kids. You know, I ended up even on dialysis gaining a lot of weight. I was caught off guard. Listen, but even though I was caught off guard, God wasn't caught off guard. Even though it was a gut punch to me, God still had a plan. And a lot of times we don't understand God's plan when we're going through it, but God does have a plan. You know, and as soon as this stuff happened, I can rem immediately remember thinking of two scriptures, the Holy Spirit quickening two scriptures. The first was Psalms 23, 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Uh, you're my, my, my rod and my staff and they comfort me. The next one was uh, Isaiah 41.10. It says, fear not for I'm with you. And listen, uh, it wasn't like all of a sudden this, this thing that I was going through was over, but these verses, they gave me peace. 
They gave me comfort. They gave me just a sense of I'm going to be okay. And let me tell you, you know, everybody at some point in time are going to go through something. I don't know how you can go through something that's heavy without God. I don't know how you can go through something heavy without a church family that cares about you. I don't know how you can go through something heavy without leaning on the Lord, you know. And I knew at this point I was going to walk through a storm but I knew God was going to take care of me. I, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about Christianity that once you get saved, it's all a bed of roses. The fact of the matter is God never promised to the Christian that things would be perfect, but he said that he would walk with us every step of the way. So I don't know a lot of your stories maybe that are watching today, but I know that God does, and I know that God cares. And if you're walking through something right now, let me tell you, God sees you, God cares for you, and God's going to bring you through. He was not caught off guard. He knew what was going to happen. He did not cause it, but he will use it for good to give a testimony to his great name. Amen? Here's the next point moving on. The second thing to remember when navigating the storm is that God is still good. Listen, God is still good. And I think it's good to remind ourselves whether we're in a storm or not every single day, multiple times a day, that we serve a God that is good. Let's look at Job chapter 1, verse 20. This is right after all this bad stuff happens to Job. Look what he says. It says, Then Job, he arose, he tore his robe, he shaved his head, he fell on the ground, and he worshiped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all that Job did, he did not charge God with wrong. Listen, after all this stuff, all these bad things happen to him. His health goes away. His kids are dead. His wealth is gone. Job, Job does not curse God. Job does not check out. Job doesn't go get drunk. Job doesn't go pop a pill. Job, Job doesn't become an atheist. No, he worships God. He sits down and he says, blessed be the name of the Lord. Basically, Job is saying God is still good. My circumstance is not good. The things that I'm going through is not good. The storm is not good. The valley is not good, but God is still good. God is still in control and I'm still going to worship God. You know, the greatest thing that the enemy wants to do when we face tribulation and storms and problems in our life, he wants us to turn against God. He wants us to think that it's God's fault. He wants us to think that God doesn't care. It's the farthest thing from the truth. Job just had a tragedy in his life. He's going through pain in his life, but he doesn't lose faith. And I want to ask everyone that's watching today, do you still believe that God is good? Even though your situation isn't what you want it to be, even though maybe you're going through something, you have a hurt, you have a wound, you're sick in your body, do you still believe that God is good? Because really, if you can still hold to the fact that God is good, that is the only foundation that you need. Do you still believe that even though we live in a world that has fallen, a world that's in chaos, a world that has all these things that happen, there's starvation, there's death, there's murder, can you still hold to the fact that God is good and Satan is bad? And God is for us and God is trying to restore mankind while Satan is trying to destroy it. You know, if we can grasp the fact that even in this fallen world that evil exists because of sin and how all of this stuff is Satan's fault, you know, that's what we need. You know, even in our rebellion and even in our sin against God, think about it. God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. If we can hold fast to that idea, it's the only thing that we need. You know, anytime there's something bad that happens in our country or around the world, whether it be a drought or a hurricane or a pandemic or this coronavirus, people will say, you know what, that proves that there is no God or that proves that this God that you serve is bad. And you know what, in essence, it doesn't at all. Evil in the world doesn't prove that there's no God. Evil in the world only proves that there is good. You know, a preacher I like to listen to, Robbie Zachariah, he says this, you know, if there's evil in the world, and I think we would all agree there's evil, that must mean that there is good. So if there's good and evil, there must be, uh, you know, a, a moral code or a moral law. And if there's a moral law, right, there must be someone who gives the moral law. That has to be God. So even in the midst of bad things happening, there is still a God and he's still in control. You know, throughout kind of the things with my kidneys, people would ask me, man, how's your faith in God? Are you mad at God? Are you upset at God? And the fact of the matter is throughout that whole time I walked that out, I was never mad at God. There was never a time I did not worship God, right? Because even though my situation may be bad, God is still good. And I'm not going to worship God any less just because something's not going good for me in my life. Listen, uh, kidney disease is bad, okay? But you know what's worse? Living away from Jesus with no hope. Listen, cancer is pretty bad. But what's worse than cancer? Not knowing the greatest love ever. And that's a man named Jesus that hung on the cross a few thousand years ago. You know, we still serve a God that's good, a God that cares. 
you know, I want to challenge you that are watching today. You know, even if you're in a bad circumstance, you can worship God through it. You can give glory to God in the midst of things. Don't give the enemy a, a, a victory in your life. Continue to worship him. Continue to pray. You know, throughout this whole process, I realized that at any minute God could take it away, but I'm not going to praise him any less because it hasn't happened yet. And I want to encourage some people right now that maybe you've been going through something for a long time. And I guarantee there's people that are going through things right now a lot worse than me, and you have been through things a lot worse than me. Do not give up. Do not give in to the enemy. You know, some of you have been praying for things for a long time. God still cares for you. Do not lose hope. Do not lose your faith. God is still good. Even when it hurts, God is still good. Listen, the third thing to remember when you're navigating the storm is to seek God like never before. You know, one of my favorite uh, movies is, is the Rocky movies, okay? And I guess what I like about them is they're kind of very similar. Uh, you know, there's always those scenes in the Rocky movies where it looks like Rocky, the champion, the hero, uh, the protagonist, that he's going to get beat. You know, he's trying to defend his title and, and he's just getting punched in the face and he's, he's bruised and he's got a cut and he can barely see. And the, the camera pans to the crowd and the crowd is just going, oh my gosh, it's time. Rocky's not going to make it. It pans to his wife and she's crying. But how many people know every one of the Rocky movies, it's the same way. The music will begin to play. Dun, da, da, dun, da, dun, da, da, da. And Rocky digs down deep and he just starts punching. He comes back and he wins a victory. Listen, when we are in a storm, when we are in a valley, we dig down deep. How do we dig down deep? We spend time with God. We seek after God. We pray. We worship. We seek the Lord with our whole heart. You know, I'm reminded of Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. I think we're familiar with the story. You know, they're walking through the town and they cast this demon out of this girl and they end up throwing them in prison because basically they've taken, uh, you know, the jobs away or the money away from these guys that are manipulating this lady. And so they're thrown into the prison and we know what happens. What doesn't happen is they don't start saying, woe is me. They don't start blaming God. They don't start cursing. They say, let's worship the Lord. Let's praise God. Let's lift up our hands and let's praise. And what happens is they begin to worship, the chains fall off. There's something powerful that happens when we seek God in our time of trouble. There's something powerful that happens when we lift up the name of God, even though when things are not going great in our life. You know, I want to challenge some people today. Sometimes there's seasons in our life where you just have to dig down deep. Um, and that's all we can do. Um, I'll be honest, throughout this whole process with my kidneys, there were some dark days. Uh, there were some days where I felt discouraged. There was some days where I felt disappointed. There was even days where I felt, you know, some depression. You know, here I am, I'm in my early 30s, I'm on dialysis. You know, I can't play with my kids like I want to. Uh, I end up gaining like 40 pounds, my, my, my clothes don't fit, I can't travel like I want to. Um, when I would get home at night from work at five or six o'clock, I still had two exchanges to do. So I would spend most of my nights for a couple of years just laying in bed or laying on the couch. And man, it was not fun. Even after my kidney surgery that I'll tell you about in a second, man, things weren't easy. I experienced more pain than I could ever experience for a month or so. It was hard for me just to get up and walk. The second day after this surgery, I get a temperature of 103.9. The doctor comes in and they think I have had a pulmonary embolism from the surgery. You know, I ended up getting a blood clot in my neck. I did several treatments of plasma. I had problems with the catheter, all this stuff. I'm just trying to be real. Like it wasn't just this walk in the park. Things were tough, but God was there every step of the way. And I kept seeking after God. I kept reading. I kept praying. I kept worshiping, even when I didn't feel like it. Listen, if we only worship and prayed and read our Bibles when we, when we felt like it, I mean, that's not what we're called to do. We do things because that's who we are. You know, I tell my kids every day, you brush your teeth two times a day, whether you feel like it or not. You connect with God, whether you feel goosebumps or you feel a passion to do so, you just do it. It gets down deep inside of you. You know, and that's what sustained me. And I thank God for my doctors and nurses and medication. I thank God for all those things. But the relationship that I had with God, my firm faith, is what brought me through this whole thing. You know, and at some point in time in everyone's life, I fully believe this, that we're going to have a time in our life where our faith is tested. Where our faith is tested. You know, and if you haven't been there before, at some point in time, you will be. But there'll be a time in your life where you don't know what the outcome is going to be. And that's why it's called faith. 
You know, if you don't have any money in your account right now, but you know tomorrow at 9 a.m. someone's depositing $100,000, you don't have to have a whole lot of faith, right? Things are going to be okay. But what about when you don't know the answers? At some point in time, every person is going to run into a wall that money, that cars, that houses, that even family can't fix. And the only thing that's going to be able to be there is your relationship with God. That's it. You know, things got real for me. I, I've got a family that loves me. I've got a great wife. We've been married 13 years, three awesome kids, great church family. But I'll tell you what, things got real for me. Uh, you know, when I'm in the room right before this uh, kidney transplant and the nurses come in and they're poking you and the anesthesiologist comes in and they're doing their thing. The doctor comes in and they make marks on you. And I'm sitting in there with this room with, with my little, at this time, two-month-old baby that we just had and my wife. And we're kind of talking and then the nurse comes in and she says, it's, it's time to go. I give my wife a kiss. I give my little baby a kiss. And, and they back you up and they roll you through that hallway on the way to surgery. Listen, wasn't anybody there. My wife, I love her with my whole heart. She wasn't there. My kids, I love with my whole heart. They love me. They weren't there. The only thing that I could rely on was my relationship with God. That's the only thing that I had. And I tell you what, I'm so glad I had one. That's somebody that you can rely on. That's someone that's not going to let you down. You know, I want to encourage you right now. This is a time to seek after God. It's a time to go after the Lord with your whole heart. You know, the fourth thing to remember when you're in the storm is that your pain has a purpose. God didn't cause the bad things that you may be going through or have went through to happen, but God will use it. I think most of us in here, we're familiar with the story of the woman at the well. Uh, it's a great story, one of my favorite stories. Uh, Jesus walks into the city. Uh, the disciples go get some food, and he's left there at a well, and a Samaritan uh, girl comes up to draw water. We know they have a little conversation there, and Jesus asks her to give him some water. They begin to talk. He begins to start talking about living water. During this conversation, he asked the woman to go bring her husband. The woman says, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you know, you're right. You've had four. And the, the man that you're living with now is not your husband. He didn't do that to condemn her, but I think to show her the need for this living water. Somewhere in the conversation, she realizes her eyes are open that he's the Messiah. She runs back into the village and she tells everybody and people believe and they come to Jesus. And he actually stays a few days, you know. If you think about this story, this woman was in a bad situation. This woman had been divorced four times in that day and age. You can guarantee she had been made fun of. She had been called names. She's getting water in the heat of the day because she obviously doesn't want to see people or talk to people. But you know what? When she has this encounter with Jesus, what does she do? She runs back to the village. She runs back to probably people that had made fun of her before. And she has to tell of what Jesus has done in her life. Why? Because maybe, just maybe, she knew what it felt like to feel empty. Maybe, just maybe, she knew what it felt like to feel pain, to feel hurt, to feel heartache. And even though she had been through a lot in her life, she knows that her pain has a greater purpose and that God used her story to change a whole village. Now listen to me right now. The storm that you're in was not caused by God, but God will use it to bless you and to bless others if you'll hold on. The storm, the frustration, maybe the depression, the discouragement, God did not cause, but God will use it and he will turn around so you can encourage other people and glory can be given to his name. And so the kingdom of God can be expanded if you will hold on. You know, throughout this process for me, I received a whole lot of prayer, a whole lot of people, you know, just reaching out to me, calls and texts. But one thing that happened just did something to me. Right before I got this kidney transplant, um, we had a Sunday night time of prayer and worship. And I'll be honest, I, the last probably six months on dialysis, man, I, just, I just felt bad. I just didn't feel good. It wasn't working well. That We were trying to switch some things up to get my, my dialysis solution to, you know, dialyze better. And so I walked into to prayer, and I, I'll be honest, I mean, I was there 20 or 30 minutes, just wasn't feel good. I got up, and, and I was walking out, and I began to hear uh, Lyric Searles uh, give a testimony. Lyric is uh, our kid's pastor's wife. And she was on the keyboard and she began to give this testimony about her, how her and her husband had, had prayed for a few years for a child and they had not been able to get pregnant. And she began to tell the story of how she had gotten pregnant and how happy she was and how joyful she was. But then she began to talk about how she miscarried. And she talked about how, you know, it hurt and how, you know, it wasn't supposed to happen like that. But then she began to tell just 
of God's goodness and how good God was and how at peace she was and how God had taken care of her and just she went on and on but I'll tell you what I'm in the back of our sanctuary there in Texarkana and I'm not a crier by any means and tears just started to come down my face partly for her story partly because I just was thinking about the goodness of God in my own life and how God has been good to me how God has saved me how God has taken care of me how God has done this that and the other and you know what I just I ended up coming up and I ended up getting prayer and, and, and not, I don't know, probably a week after is when, you know, my transplant, transplant took place. But listen, her pain had a purpose and your pain and my pain have a purpose. If we will hold on, if we will not give up, I'm telling you, God will bless you and he'll use it to bless a whole a lot of other people. You know, throughout the Bible, it's hard to find anybody that didn't do something great for God that didn't have to walk through some trials. You think about Paul, shipwrecked, beaten, stoned, put in jail, yet wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. You think about Ruth. She's a widow. She's in a foreign country. You know, she ended up marrying the man that owned the field, and she ended up being an ancestor of Jesus. Listen, your pain has a purpose. Your story that you walk through has a purpose. What you're walking through right now has a purpose. God cares, and God will use it to help other people. You know, as my musician is coming up, the fifth and final thing to remember when you're navigating the storm is to never give up because the storm is temporary. Listen, the storm in our life is temporary. Don't lose your faith in God. Don't quit seeking after God. Don't quit helping people. Don't give in to the lies of the enemy. Listen, most of the battle is in our mind and it's the enemy trying to just throw darts at us. The Bible says to take every thought captive. You know, most scholars would believe uh, that the things that Job went through, all the tribulations that he went through, really only lasted a few months. Now, what happened to him was hard. It was terrible. It was painful. Yet it was only temporary. You know, maybe like I said earlier, right now, you're going through a hard time in your life. Your body is, is ailing. The breakup is fresh. You just lost your job. Listen, there's a whole lot of fear and confusion about the future with what's going on in our nation with COVID-19. But listen, I want to encourage you that pain will not last forever. That hurt will not last forever. Kind of funny thing during, you know, these couple of years I was on dialysis, a lot of my clothes didn't fit, you know, and I, I got rid of them. I throw some away. I gave some away. But you know what? At some point in time, it was over. And I wish I had those clothes, right? Listen, I want to encourage you, the pain's not going to last forever. The promise of the Bible is this. If we will hold on, God's going to rescue us. He's going to rescue us in this life. He'll definitely rescue us in the next life. But he will heal our hurt. He will fix our heart. He will heal our, heal our body. And even though it wasn't God that caused all this stuff to happen, he will use it. And what I'm prophesying today is this. What happened to Job in chapter 42, verse 12 is going to happen to you. It says this, And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. See, God restored everything to Job. He actually gave him more than he had before. And listen, that's exactly what happened to me. For several years of my life, you know, it was frustrating. It's not what I wanted. But you know what happened on, I think it was May 3rd of last year, I got a phone call from University of Arkansas Medical Sciences. I got a phone call and they said, there's a healthy 30 year old man who wants to donate a kidney. And I'll tell you what, I mean, just, it was crazy. Out of the blue, this person that I did not know wanted to give me a kidney. And listen, in a six hour surgery, the problem that I had for six years was over. The problem that I walked through for six years, in six hours it was over, and I'm telling you right now, what you're walking through right now, it can be over just like that. Do not give up, do not lose focus, do not check out, do not blame God, keep worshiping, keep seeking after God. God is going to bring a rescue for you. God is gonna take care of you. You know, people say God doesn't do miracles anymore, and I'm here standing before you saying he does. You know, I had over 75 people that were on my transplant list. Uh, over 30 of them got tested. The guy who I got a kidney from was an altruistic donor. An altruistic donor is someone who does not know the person getting the kidney or the organ. You know, and he didn't even want to meet me. 
but we ended up meeting a week after just because we had an appointment at the same time and God orchestrated that whole thing. But I asked this young man, I said, what would make you give a kidney to someone you don't even know? I'm not your brother. I'm not, you know, I didn't even know you before this. Here's what he said to me. He said, God told me to give this kidney. Some of us in here, we've been praying for something for a long time. We've been praying for our spouse for a long time. We've been praying for our kids for a long time. We've been praying for breakthrough for a long time. And I'm here to say, you may not know it, but God's working on your behalf right now. God is going to take care of you. I wanna remind you before I pray that even though you're going through a storm or you just came through one, God cares, God is near, and God's gonna bring you through. Keep praying and keep fighting and keep holding on, amen? Let me pray for you, Lord. I thank you so much for my friends. I thank you, Lord, that you care about every single person that can hear my voice right now. You love the world. And Lord, we know there's a lot of people that may be going through a tough time right now, financially, emotionally, God, with their spouse or kids, whatever it is with their job. God, I thank you that you see them and that you care. And Lord, even though they may be walking through a storm right now, you are right there with them. God, let them know your peace. Let them know your joy. God, I pray that we would never get up, give up, that we would not uh, back down, that we would not draw away from you, but we would use this opportunity to draw near to you. God, I pray that we would trust you with our whole heart and right now our faith would increase. God, we believe that you can do anything. We trust you. God, I pray that you would bless your people in Jesus' mighty name, amen. I wanna turn it back over to Pastor Steve. Thank you so much. Bless you, Lord. Wow, what a great word. Wasn't that amazing? I appreciate you. Say we appreciate you coming. Thank you Amen. so much, Pastor Travis. We pray for you guys and yeah. the church there at Texarkana Church on the Rock, Pastor John Miller, the whole staff. I want to just Amen. say thank you guys for joining us today. We're looking forward to the time that we can all get back together. And uh, until that time, God bless you. Have a great week.